Now, the problem about believing in God is looking for evidence. I regret to tell you, and we won't have a discussion with you later, but I will later on, there is zero evidence for the existence of God. I'm terribly sorry, there, there just isn't. Now, first of all, just let me remind you that every culture in the world, hundreds of them, have gods of some sort. You are focused on the Christian God, but may I ask what's wrong with their gods? I mean, why do you think that your God, and I assume you're all Christian gods, why do you think your God is sort of better based than, all, than theirs? And there's a very nice story from um, someone who works on religion, an anthropologist called Pascal Boyer. And he was at a dinner in Oxford. Maybe it was Cambridge, it doesn't really matter, but a smart English place. <laughs> and he was telling them about a group he'd been studying in southern Africa who believed that there were witches who flew over the territory there and killed some of their cattle. And the head of the college said, how can people have such absurd ideas? Isn't it ridiculous? And Pascal didn't have the courage to tell them that these people knew about Christianity and had often asked him, why was it that the people in Christianity were still suffering because a couple of their ancestors had eaten some fruit? Now he does give a second argument designed to prove that God does not exist, and that is that there's no evidence for God's existence. Well, this is not a good argument, frankly, because in the words of uh, a forensic scientist I once met in Australia, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Just because there's no evidence that the butler was the murderer doesn't mean that the butler was not the murderer. Or to give a scientific example, we have no evidence so far that there was an early inflationary era in the origin of the cosmos. But woe be to the cosmologist who says because we don't have any evidence of it, therefore it did not exist. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. He needs to give a positive argument against God's existence. Evidence. And to use catchphrases as the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, I mean, that's philosophical bunkum. I mean, I'm terribly sorry. If God exists, you've actually got to find some real evidence. I'm terribly sorry that we scientists do base the way we think on evidence. I mean, if I say that I think that you're a kangaroo because I dreamt you were a kangaroo last night, that is not evidence of the slightest importance. I think you really, really, if you want to go, you look for evidence, you've got to find evidence. So what about the argument based upon the absence of evidence for God? Well, I said the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. He said, well, that's just a slogan. The point is that in order to justify the belief that God does not exist, you have to have some sort of evidence or justification for that. Otherwise, it's possible that God uh, does exist. Um, even if all of the arguments for God failed, that wouldn't be evidence that God does not exist. Um, so that in order to provide some sort of justification for atheism, for thinking that belief in God is false, he needs to give some sort of arguments, not just say there's an absence of evidence. And in any case, I have presented the evidence in tonight's debate. Well, we really have a problem about evidence. Say I say to you, and I think it's partly in Richard Dawkins' book, I believe there's a teapot going around the earth very fast. I don't know any evidence against that. So do you think the teapot is really going around the earth? So there's the absence of evidence that the teapot is going around the world, uh, not going around the earth, so therefore the teapot is going around the earth. I think one's in a bit of a fix here. If you want to say that the teapot is going around the earth, you really require some evidence that there really is a teapot there. Or say that I imagine, or I tell you, that I've seen fish that can talk. Very good Afrikaans. I'm South African, you see. <laughs> and they speak, yes, their dialect is not that good, but they speak very nicely. Would you not like a little evidence for this? And the absence of evidence surely would make you doubt it. So when we come to God, it's not a question the absence of evidence that there is no God, the absence of evidence that there is a God. There's not the slightest indication of evidence of the kind that we would use in science in our day-to-day -day lives 
or the existence of this supernatural being again. What about this claim that in the absence of evidence for God, you're justified in thinking there is no God? And he gives the example of the kangaroo and the teapot. You see, the failure of those illustrations is that the reason we don't believe that I'm a kangaroo is not because of the absence of evidence that I am a kangaroo. Rather, it is the presence of evidence that I am not a kangaroo. Like we have good evidence that I'm homo sapiens. <laughs> Similarly, the, the teapot example also fails because the reason we don't think there's a teapot in the orbit around the Earth is not because of the absence of evidence for such a teapot. It's because we have good evidence that no such piece of China has been launched into space by us. <laughs> or uh, that extraterrestrials have, have put it there. So it is the presence of contrary evidence. But tonight we've heard no contrary evidence against the existence of God. And so this is just an elementary logical point. A proposition is not shown to be false by the absence of evidence for it. The proposition could still be true in the absence of evidence for it. We just wouldn't know if it's true. 